How are we doing? Wednesday, 3 o'clock. Dr. Gary Huber here with Chelsea. She rejoined me for this one. We're going to be talking mm -hmm. about anxiety. Everybody, everybody experiences anxiety, melancholy, mood disorder, depression sometime in their life. A little, okay? But if it's taking over your life, if it's, if it's taking the total joy out of your life, if it's ruining your life, uh, there's things you can do about it. You're in control of this. And we're going to show you how to take control of it. We're going to show you why you got there and what you can do to reverse it, right? You don't have to live with it. Yeah, don't be nervous about this. Don't be nervous. Yeah, don't be I'm anxious, a anxious about, about this. this talk. We'll, we'll see you in just a minute. <laughs> I just marinated it in plastic. We don't like plastic. We like glass. Why do we care about all this plastic? What's the big it's deal? It's a toxic bomb. Our whole practice is based on getting you to be the best version of yourself. Remove the crappy foods, the wheat, the dairy, the sugar. Everything we do is based in the medical literature and, and evidence-based medicine. We're going to look at how to get you healthy, not how to get you on medicines, how to get you off medicine. There's a couple of very curious things that CBD oil does, helping people with migraine headaches reduce the frequency and intensity of the headache. People that have ADD or ADHD, anxiety or mood swings or depression, these things can help decrease anxiety and make a child more calm. Lyme has been found from coast to coast. 50% of all counties in the United States of Lyme disease documented. You asked for it, you got it. So we've gotten some requests from you saying you wanted to hear about anxiety and mood disorder and depression, mm -hmm. and why not? It's very common. It's a big topic. Big topic. It is a huge topic. This is probably going to spill over into a part two. Mm -hmm. I, I just can feel that it will because it is. This is a really big so topic. So many things. Um, when we start going down this path, just know that if you're having periodic episodes of a little anxiety or mood mm -hmm. disorder, depression, that's pretty normal. We all have a little of that. It's when it becomes overwhelming and takes over our life that it really, uh, if you find yourself stuck on medication or if the medication you're on isn't working, we want to help you unravel that because in, in the traditional model, we go, oh, you're depressed. Let me get my prescription pad out and here is your And you think fill that's the, the blank. only option. You do. And one of the, the first myths that I want to make sure we dispel is that it is not genetic. Right? What? It's not genetic. So when we look at many of the diseases we have, uh, whether it's diabetes mm -hmm. or hypertension, you're not born with it. Most of the diseases we ever run into problems with is something we develop over time. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, because of lifestyle and things that we've done. And so uh, genet our anxiety and depression are no different. Now you may say, well, everybody in my family is anxious and everybody in my family is depressed. Um, you can have a genetic predisposition, but it only amounts to maybe 20% of your risk. In other words, 80% mm -hmm. of whether you go on to be anxious or depressed has nothing to do with your genes. It has to do with what are you doing to your genes? What are you doing to your body? What are you doing to your brain? And that's what we really want to... Plus, maybe you were taught that by your family. And if you live in an anxious household, maybe that's just how you thought life was perceived as anxiety-filled exactly. and, and depressed. So it, well, it could be that too. It could be that too. And oftentimes we see people that are big and they go, well, everybody in my family's big, it's just genetic. Well, you grew up with that family. Yeah. You grew up with their exercise habits and their dietary habits, and, mm -hmm. and that's part of the equation. So that to me is empowering. Yeah. Because if you're anxious or have low mood, you're in control. You can change it. You can change it. You don't have to rely on a pharmaceutical company. And by the way, if you're taking a medication that's helping, great. I'm not saying throw it in the garbage can immediately. I'm saying if it's helping, that's fantastic. But there's a lot of things you can do that will either make your medicine work better or get rid of the need for the medication. Well, just like patients come in and say, I didn't know you could get rid of type 2 diabetes. Yes, right. you can. Don't stop taking your medicine. We can change a few different things, and then you could potentially get off of yep. it. So, yeah, same concept. So we see that quite a bit. So first of all, yes, there is a genetic component, mm -hmm. but it's a smaller piece of the puzzle. And we really want to begin to expand what else may be uh, contributing to that? I have to go look at my notes because my brain has got so many things going through it. <laughs> speaking speaking of, of brain. Did you get your fat today? <laughs> I, I, I apparently I need a little bit more. <laughs> so I want you to address this yeah. because the brain is mostly fat. We're fat heads. Yes, you're a fat head. I'm a fat head. 70% <laughs> of our brain is fat. Is fat. And what don't we eat in our diet is healthy fats. Healthy fats. We eat a ton of processed foods. And before you jump into that, I yes. want to have Chris throw up this slide. Mm -hmm. This was very interesting. If you'd gone back in time 10 years ago, 12 years ago, uh, and asked your physician, um, you know, what's the cause of my depression? He would say, it's a neurotransmitter problem. There's some chemical in your brain that's just off. It's out of balance. Mm -hmm. And we're going to try to rebalance it with this drug. You know what? That thought is ancient history. More than a decade ago, we realized some smart cookie figured this out and said, um, I noticed that patients that have the flu and patients that are depressed act a lot the same. Hmm. 
They both want to sit in a dark room. They don't want to be bothered. Uh, they have low mood. They're kind of achy. And he was onto something. And research has shown that if your brain is depressed or anxious, mm -hmm. that there's inflammation there. Mm -hmm. So just like the flu causes inflammatory cytokines to make the brain inflamed, depression and anxiety are at the root of it. It's inflammation within the brain. Okay. Mm -hmm. If our brain's not inflamed, then we're not anxious and depressed. We're cool so and groovy. tell me, what would I do if I wanted to become depressed and anxious? Mm -hmm. How would I inflame my brain? What would be some things that would be an would awesome way to get there? I would give you a ton of sugar. I'd make sure you loaded up on the wheat, you didn't get any sleep, and you ate absolutely no healthy fats. That's the perfect way to make the your... Perfect the perfect what recipe. The perfect recipe. What are those sugars doing? What are those carbs doing that creates inflammation in my brain? I think the perfect way to put it is it kind of makes those cell membranes a little crusty. You want your cell membranes, do your little example of your shirt. <laughs> to be loose fluid. and fluid. So cell membranes, if I'm a cell and this is my cell membrane, I want it to be fluid. I want it to be able to, because I'm sitting next to another cell mm -hmm. and we're communicating and we're sharing information and we're sharing chemical compounds. Mm -hmm. um, when I eat sugar, or carbs, yep. I make reactive oxygen species, that creates inflammation. That makes your CRP, your cytokines, inflammatory chemicals go up. Mm -hmm. When I eat unhealthy fats, such KFC, as chicken KFC wings. is not healthy for me. It's not healthy. So fried foods aren't so much so much healthy. Yeah. Uh, what's interesting about the human body is when we eat certain fats, like let's say we get fats from Oreos or fats from McDonald's or Kentucky Fried Chicken, mm -hmm. those fats don't get broken down into their basic elements. Proteins they just do. stay there. Yeah. Right? That's KFC fat, and that fat gets incorporated <laughs> In right into the cell membrane. <laughs> yeah. So my shirt goes from being fluid. And, and functioning and able to take in and move out mm -hmm. toxins, and it becomes hard and, as crusty. you said, crusty. Yeah. And so we don't have what's called membrane fluidity. Mm -hmm. We have stiff membranes and poor communication, mm -hmm. so cells can't exchange information. So you were well. saying every other macronutrient can be broken down, like carbohydrates you mm -hmm. break down and protein, yeah. but those unhealthy fats, you can't break them we, down. We assimilate just what we take in. So if I'm taking in healthy olive oil mm -hmm. and healthy coconut oil and other forms of healthy oils, then those healthy oils keep the cell membrane being fluid because right. that's what it wants. It wants omega-3s and it wants healthy oils. We take in corn oil or we take in canola oil. Mm -hmm. We take in some of these unhealthy trans fats. That's when the cells get crusty. And when we look at processed foods, if you ate a day of processed foods, KFC, uh, lean cuisines, you could easily be getting four or 500 or 500 ingredients just in that day mm -hmm. loaded with MSG and all kinds of crap. It's almost like it's gunking up your cells in a way, making yeah. your brain inflamed. So it's not yeah. uncommon that we see kids now in our practice who are 13, 14, who really shouldn't have any worries in the world, and they're coming in and they're anxious. And they're anxious. And they're eating goldfish and ho-hos and Twinkies, and they haven't seen a vegetable. That's or, kid food. Yes. They my, can't eat leave meat. Leave my kid food alone. No, <laughs> they're not allowed food. to have vegetables and fish. Yeah. But it is. It doesn't make a big difference. So mm -hmm. when we see kids that are having ADD, ADHD, it's often dietary related. Absolutely. And if you just give them more magnesium, well, what do we, where do we get magnesium from? We get it from vegetables. We get it from fish and mm -hmm. beans and seeds. Well, kids don't eat those a lot. Yeah. So I want to dive into the nerves. So we talked about yeah. that the brain is inflamed. There's lots of ways to inflame it. Stress, lack of sleep, bad diet, bad fats. That can be a good starting point. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I want to bring up that there is a biology behind anxiety. Mm -hmm. And Chris is going to bring that fabulous slide. We're going to get rid of our depressed flu patient there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and understand that there is... Uh, Metaphysical reasons why we can be anxious or depressed. Metaphysical meaning it's our belief system. Maybe it's a learned behavior. So there can be belief systems as a part of why you feel anxious or why you don't. But then there's a biology. And both mm -hmm. of them are applicable. Both of them apply. Mm -hmm. So we want to look at the biology first. We'll get to the metaphysical parts. Um, Chris, if you can bring up that other slide. I so, have to hit. Oh, I mm -hmm. have to bring it up. Goodness. There we go. That's, whoops, that's the wrong direction. Ah. Oh. It's Thunderdome in there here. There we go. We've gone crazy. All right. So I want to throw this up. Um, I'm not going to throw up. I want to throw this slide <laughs> up so we can look at this. And I don't expect you to memorize this. There's no quiz at the end. I want to hear your questions, okay, because we're going we're gonna to hit on a lot of different areas, and they all matter, but they may not all apply to you. So if you have specific questions, bring them up as we're going through this. But I want to talk through the biology a little bit and understand that our lovely brain, this fabulous 70% fat organ, all of these things affect how well it works. 
we're going to start by looking at neurotransmitters because, as I said, a decade ago, you would have said, oh, you're depressed. One of these neurotransmitters must be off. Mm -hmm. There's a problem with them. Neurotransmitters are just chemicals that tell one cell, carries a message from this cell to the next cell. That's all they are. They're just chemical messengers mm -hmm. that message either excitement or calm down or whatever their, their function is to be. So these are all neurotransmitters, and we look at serotonin as the first one that's listed there, and a lot of you are very familiar with something called SSRIs, serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Mm -hmm. We take things like Prozac. So we can, we can go to medications to take things like Prozac uh, or Zoloft, and these are SSRIs, and I want to explain to you how those things are working, because mm -hmm. serotonin is an important neurotransmitter, but just giving somebody something that's going to stimulate their serotonin, Let's show them how it works. Okay? They're cotton balls. So here we go. You should always have a bourbon glass full of cotton balls because <laughs> that's very important for science. No, but I'm, I'm going to be nerve number A and this is nerve B mm -hmm. and I want to send a signal of, of calm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have a vesicle and a vesicle is just kind of like this glass. It's at the end of the nerve and it contains chemicals. Each of these cotton balls is a serotonin molecule. And so what I'm going to do is I throw that to the next nerve. Mm -hmm. She receives a stimulus of serotonin which is a calming influence on the cell, mm -hmm. and then she sends it back and it goes right in the vesicle. And so I never run out of serotonin. We're, we're in good shape, yep. right? But if I take something called an SSRI, if I take Prozac or Zoloft, um, it's a serotonin reuptake inhibitor. In other words, I can still send serotonin, but now mm -hmm. when I take this drug, it's like putting up a brick wall. Oh, I already you, blocked it. <laughs> you threw it at me, <laughs> and I send more serotonin, right? Blocked. And so the serotonin is being used but this cell is not reabsorbing it. And so look what's happening to my pool of serotonin. Mm -hmm. It's being decreased. And mm -hmm. over time, the amount of serotonin that I have to share with my neighbor nerve mm -hmm. is depleted. <coughs> and that happens a lot with patients. They start mm -hmm. off on a dose. Oh, doc, it really works. It's really helping. And then over time, you may notice, oh, that dose isn't working so good and anymore. And then they have to increase it or... Well, let me increase your dose. Mm -hmm. or we'll try a different one or we'll try another medication with that. So sometimes that's a part of the equation that mm -hmm. we're just not getting the serotonin. Now, can you make serotonin? Absolutely. Yeah. You make serotonin from tryptophan. You get it from foods. But what if you're on an acid blocking medicine? Maybe you're on Protonix or Nexium or and Zantac can... and Digest. you don't break down proteins. Yeah. Well, trouble. tryptophan is an amino acid. It comes from proteins. So there's a lot of different things. Notice already, there's things you're doing. What if, what if you don't have much protein in your diet, or you mm -hmm. can't break it down, or you're not assimilating it, or maybe your gut is really unhealthy, and once again, we can't assimilate tryptophan. Mm -hmm. So a number of things can affect your serotonin pool, and that's just one neurotransmitter. GABA is a very calming neurotransmitter, and I want to talk a little bit about glutamate, mm -hmm. <coughs> because glutamate We've got it here on the board. <laughs> glutamine and glutamate are very significant. Tell me a little bit, where does, where does glutamine so, come from? So, hand me my marker if you don't mind. So, glutamine comes from protein, um, animal protein, which we all get. And which one you want. just like anything in life, we want our bodies to be in homeostasis. So, too much of anything is not good and too little of anything is not good. Yeah. We use the example of water. You, you need water, but too sure much do. you would drown. Or blood sugar. You don't want too low blood sugar, too high a blood sugar. So these are not bad things, but too much of glutamate will make you feel very anxious, correct? Yeah. So if my brain wants to think, it needs glutamate. Yes. It's very important. So right now, as we're having cognitive activity, we need glutamate to have cognition. Mm -hmm. In fact, what's one of the highest glutamate foods on the planet? It's breast milk, because mm. you're developing that brain. But you go from being alert and conscious and thinking, and as glutamate gets higher and higher and higher, now we're hyper mm -hmm. and a little bit higher. Now we're anxious, and if it keeps going, oftentimes we can end up in depression. Mm -hmm. The nerve has been overstimulated. So again, this balance is key, but is there anything you do on a daily basis that alters this balance? Oh, absolutely. I'm gonna write a few things down and you can explain as I write. So All sleep, right. of course, very simple, right? Sleep is very simple, but very <laughs> critical. So mm -hmm. what, what sleep does, it limits the amount of glutamine that's going to turn into glutamate, right? So there's, there's kind of a breaking effect because if we don't have that and all your glutamine, which your muscle is mostly glutamine, that's mm -hmm. one of the most common amino acids in your muscle. If all of that were to suddenly shift in the glutamate, blah, all right? So if you're not getting sleep, that does a number of things. Number one, it raises cortisol, mm -hmm. which is a stress hormone. Okay. Um, if we're stressed because we're not getting sleep, we don't make serotonin during the daytime. Serotonin and melatonin mm -hmm. are things that limit the overproduction of glutamate. 
if I'm calm and cool and groovy and I had a good night's sleep, my cortisol will be normal. Mm -hmm. I'll make normal amounts of serotonin, the serotonin we just talked about. Mm -hmm. And serotonin at nighttime gets converted into melatonin. melatonin. So all that flows. But mm -hmm. when we stop getting sleep, if we're overstressed, then we start changing. So melatonin, serotonin we got is there. Magnesium. We got some of our vitamin D, which nobody gets magnesium. Well, let's talk about those food. two because these are nutrients, right? Yeah. Now, vitamin D. I live in the fabulous state of Cincinnati, Ohio, where we have sun every day, 365 days a year. Mm hmm. We're not getting a lot of vitamin D. <laughs> no. We don't get sun every no. three, six, no. five days a year. No. So if we don't get sun, we don't get vitamin D. It's normal for people in this area to have a vitamin D of 22, a little low. Mm -hmm. Vitamin D definitely has an impact on serotonin receptors and can affect mood. Mm -hmm. And people with low mood should definitely get your vitamin D levels checked because it's easy to replace. Magnesium. We yeah. get magnesium through vegetables, fish, beans, like we talked about. And most often time, people aren't getting enough magnesium. It can be very calming to the brain. So even just something simple like vitamin D and magnesium can can really help make people calm. How am I losing magnesium? Oh my gosh, when you when you sweat, if you exercise, mm -hmm. um, stress, you can lose magnesium. So those are the big ones. My but coffee. Your coffee, yes. Diuretic. What about what about my bourbon? Uh, what about that's my not red helping. Wine? Not helping. Right? <laughs> All these things are diuretic. So even you say, well, I get a couple of servings of vegetable a day, mm -hmm. but if you're drinking too much coffee, too much red wine, and that can be measured. Mm -hmm. That is, as, both of those are very very simple blood tests, mm -hmm. and if they're low, simply normalize them. But these are the things that begin to lay the groundwork mm -hmm. for normal glutamate, not excessive. Uh, what Two else more, might have an impact? Uh, N-acetylcysteine, NAC. Um, again, you'd get those from your vegetables, your cruciferous vegetables. Uh, lithium is a mineral. So these are all just your basic healthy food. Wait a minute, my, my psychotic neighbor is on lithium. You mean like a drug lithium? No, a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, a little bit different. <laughs> little so lithium is just a basic mineral. Lithium is no different than magnesium in that it's a mineral. It's in your water, it's in your foods. But some people don't get enough. Uh, and it's something that can be replaced. And lithium has been shown mm -hmm. to help cognition because it normalizes glutamate. So if we took away everything, yeah. you don't sleep, you're not getting melatonin, then, woo! Flying. Yeah. Glutamate's just flying. We're mm -hmm. overproducing it, and that can make you agitated. So there's lots of different mechanisms that can drive anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. This is just one. But notice just this one mechanism. How many areas you can influence and implement this. Mm -hmm. We talked about brain inflammation. I can yep. piss it off with bad fats and too much sugar. I can stay up all night. I can not get vitamin D and magnesium based on my lifestyle and we can have a big impact. But foods always play a big role. So that's some of the neurotransmitter activity. Let's talk about serotonin, our good old friend and SSRIs in exercise. So if I go and exercise, I've always heard that, right? Mm -hmm. Exercise is good for your mood. Well, it is but I don't feel good, I'm tired, mm -hmm. I'm you depressed, I don't want to exercise, mm -hmm. right? So how does exercise affect our mood? Oh, okay. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's a number of ways. First of all, we know that cortisol, we all make cortisol, you should have cortisol, it's normal, mm -hmm. it gives you energy. But if you have too much, mm -hmm. stressed, kids, job, cortisol is your stress hormone, too much, problem. We know that meditation, prayer, and exercise, three different lifestyle factors, but exercise helps keep cortisol in a normal range. Mm -hmm. All right, that's number one. Helps with blood flow to the brain. Your brain's only this big. It's only about three to four percent of your body weight. That's small, but it gets 20 percent of all the blood flow coming out of the heart. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. It's highly metabolic. And so when you exercise and you give it more blood flow and more oxygen, tends to normalize, tends to help it function better. Mm -hmm. And probably one of the most important things that happens is if we have, we talked about glutamate being important for just cognition, for thinking, mm -hmm. for being able to solve problems and, and be at your desk and, 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 and aware. But dopamine and norepinephrine are key, huge for having mental focus. Mm -hmm. You know, the hunter that lays in the grass for hours waiting for the animal so that he can capture the animal and feed his family. That's the old caveman dopamine. You have to have vigilance and be able to focus. Mm -hmm. And what do we hear about kids these days? They, they can't, can't focus. focus. So dopamine's critical for the brain to be calm and focused and norepinephrine for the brain to be alive and feel motivated, all right? Mm -hmm. So we want those. Do we want too much? No, that can no. be a problem. Mm -hmm. But when we exercise, specifically when we exercise, we increase dopamine and norepinephrine. You ever gone exercising and during it or after it, you go, man, I feel awesome. The runner's high. The runner's high. Mm -hmm. Some of that has to do with uh, the cannabidiol system. Okay, we've talked about that with CBD oil. Mm -hmm. And some of that has to be, I just boosted my dopamine and norepinephrine and man, my brain feels feel incredible. I'm mm -hmm. alive, I'm, I'm alert, I'm awake. 
that's what's amazing about exercise. And now let's add this to the equation. What happens when I take an SSRI? What happens when I take Prozac or Zoloft? It lowers norepinephrine and dopamine. Mm. Now, Prozac and Zoloft can help a lot of people, mm -hmm. but it is not for everybody. Just having anxiety or depression is not an indication for those drugs. Because if you have significant fatigue, if your cortisol is too low, Serotonin for a lot of people, I see about a 50-50 mix. They say, I feel worse. I feel worse. Yeah. I felt no better. Mm -hmm. It made me tired. And here's some of the challenge we run into. If you've ever taken those meds and you went, oh, it made me tired. Now how do you feel about exercise? Or eating good. I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> eat good. Or yeah. cooking. I don't want to cook. Yeah. So if an SSRI, if, you're, if it just isn't the right medicine for you, it can make you feel more fatigued. It can lower dopamine, lower norepinephrine. And then you don't want to exercise, and then it can create an even worsening picture. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're not evil. Those meds help people, but they don't help everybody. Yeah. And you have to look at somebody's physiology and decide, is that really what they need? Mm -hmm. I would argue if somebody would look at their lifestyle and their sleep and their diet and their foods, that a lot of those folks that are just put on an SSRI might do perfectly fine without it, yeah. but changing those other things. So again, it's, it's not a bad thing, mm -hmm. but it's not for everybody. Not everybody responds well. So exercise plays a big role. Sleep, we've already talked, talked about, about sleep. It's important for everything, mm -hmm. right? For your brain to fix itself. We talk about brain-derived neurotropic factor. That's that's miracle girl for your brain. It is, <laughs> right? It fixes stuff. <laughs> yeah. So right now we're doing damage to our brain. We're eating food, we're breathing air, we're moving around. We're doing a little micro damage, wear and tear. Mm -hmm. It's okay, it's gonna fix. Yeah. The body will fix all that stuff at night when you sleep. Sleep. If you have the right food and if you get good sleep. Yeah. Okay. Key. So sleep is a key part of that because that's when our brain actually repairs itself and the neurons repair so that my fluid membrane <laughs> can stay fluid. And, and not, not crusty. And not get crusty. <laughs> we, we look at food. We've already talked a bit about food and how they can be inflammatory um, and how many chemicals. You've already alluded oh to four to 500 chemicals. Hundreds. And all these these processed food chemicals, uh, preservatives, foods. convenience foods, those things can actually sit in the receptor beds. We know that plastics is one of the worst. Mm -hmm. we, we've, we've talked a lot about <laughs> plastic. Did. It's toxic bomb. Toxic bomb. <laughs> You've heard me say that a million times. Yeah. <laughs> so, so plastics are bad, just like Chelsea's pointing mm -hmm. out. All those food chemicals, they can sit in the, in the receptor beds, and now you have this good epinephrine, norepinephrine, serotonin that can't get into the receptor. And how many times do be. we have patients just change our diet, maybe add some omega-3 fatty acids, and, said, and they say, my mood is better. So Huge it difference. can really be very simple. I see when you put somebody on a good diet, especially a mm -hmm. ketogenic diet, and they didn't say they had depression. Yeah. But they'll come in and go, oh, my gosh. My brain is just firing away. Mm -hmm. I feel alive. My mood is better. And again, we're just trying to facilitate better cognition. Mm -hmm. We make our livings with our brain. So we're very plugged into what are we doing to our brains to keep them healthy? Because if, if, if I go loopy, I'm not going to be any good to anybody. <laughs> um, all right, so we talked a little bit about foods. What about uh, fats? Well, we talked, talked a lot, lot about, about fats, that. healthy fats, because your brain's mostly fat. And then we get into hormones. And hormones is a, is a big topic. And we spent a little time in the last month talking about male and female hormones. They're key because what's interesting about that is there, there's a whole topic called neurosteroids. That just mm. means we make estrogen and testosterone. Everybody does, men and women. And these, neuro, these, these hormones get converted in the periphery out in our in our tissues into other compounds. So progesterone turns into allopregnenolone and testosterone to androstenediol. And these compounds then cross back into our brain and they are the most calming compounds in our body. They allow the GABA receptor to work. So what happens to Chelsea mm -hmm. when she hits menopause and can't make progesterone anymore? You don't sleep as well, maybe your mm -hmm. mood goes a little down and mm -hmm. weight goes up. Yeah. Did I sum it up? <laughs> what, what, are, what are guys always like to joke about when a woman's, you know, got, got her time of the yeah. month? Oh, Moody. Oh, yeah. right? And, and part of that is it because mm -hmm. progesterone's changing. And it's showing you in dramatic fashion mm -hmm. that if my progesterone shifts, the allopregnenolone in my brain changes, mm -hmm. my mood changes, my cognition. Women that replace their hormones after menopause, oh my goodness, what a difference in their cognition, their ability to, to carry on with their careers, whether they're doctors, lawyers, business people, whatever they're doing, even if they're just um, moms taking care of kids, their cognition is so much better. Mm -hmm. So hormones play a big role, thyroid plays a big role. We talked about that a few weeks back yep. because thyroid is, it has to be there for the brain to function normal. Mm -hmm. So notice how many things 
aren't an lot. SSRI, aren't an effect, effects, or aren't a drug mm -hmm. that have an impact, and then lastly, medications. And again, I don't want to throw medications under the bus and say they're evil, but I do think oftentimes it's offered as the only solution, mm -hmm. and it's not even close to the only solution. Mm -hmm. There's tons of things that we do every day that are going to either help or hinder our ability to be in a good mood, mm -hmm. and that's just the biology. Yes. We haven't even gotten into the, <laughs> the whole mindset of this all. The whole mindset of yeah, this all. Yeah, it's a whole other okay. topic. So, if you have any questions on the biology, I know it's kind of convoluted and a little complex. We try to just go over it to give mm -hmm. you a sense of empowerment. I want you to realize that you can have an impact right now. Right now, you can take vitamin D and magnesium and do mm -hmm. simple things that could really have an impact on your mood. And if you're on a medication, I'm not suggesting you just throw it in the trash and go grab some vitamin D and all will be well. But I am suggesting that if we make these changes in diet yeah. and you get rid of the inflammation to the brain and we begin to look at some of these labs that we can measure, that is not uncommon that people in our practice come off those medications because they no longer need them. other supplements besides the vitamin D and the magnesium, and that's a mm -hmm. whole other topic too, but... We're going to get into that. Yeah. And I don't want to carry this uh, too far. Chris, what are we, 15, 20 minutes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I want to go one more slide I just want to share and maybe we'll carry this into our next discussion which is the metaphysical part of this mm -hmm. right if we're anxious or depressed and if you look at this slide that I had Chris put up anxiety and depression it is it's just a simple emotion right and we can either choose to plug into that energy or we can choose not to mm -hmm. I had a great conversation with a guy uh, just last week very troubled with anxiety and he's got some troubling things in his past. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, I said, stop for a moment and tell me, when's the last time you felt anxious? And he said, you got that in your head? Yeah. What were you thinking about? Mm. Were you thinking about something in the past that you regret or that brings you bad emotion? Or were you thinking about something in the future that you were nervous or worried about? And as we talked about it, you could almost see the light bulb go off. He goes, you're right. Every time I get anxious or nervous, I'm either thinking about things I regret from the past. That you can't change they're done. Mm -hmm. Or I'm thinking about things in the future that may never happen. That might not happen. It's an interesting perspective. It is. Yeah. And it's an important one mm -hmm. because I don't think enough people realize that they can literally turn the channel. They can turn the dial. They yeah. can decide what to focus on mm -hmm. and they can decide I'm not going to focus on that or if I'm feeling a certain emotion. Emotions are I look at them as breezes. That's why I put this picture up. Mm -hmm. Emotions are just breezes, whether we're talking about envy or anger or upset uh, over anything, anxiety, depression. These are simply emotions. Emotions aren't real. They're not, I mean, I know that we feel them, but they're not tangible. Mm -hmm. they're, they're simply waves that we can say, oh, I'm, I'm going to hunker down and really enjoy this sense of anger. Mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat some things up. I'm going to hunker down and really experience this anxiety, or mm -hmm. I can say, no, I, I choose not to. And I know this sounds trite, and I don't mean it to, but you have the ability to, if you recognize where you are in the present moment, mm -hmm. you can only feel happiness in the present moment, right now. What's interesting about that, and we'll get into it maybe at the next video. <laughs> two more. We've got two or three videos two coming or three up videos. this whole yeah, we're gonna do the two next or, one. <laughs> we're going to do two or three right now. Um, yeah. That people that meditate tend to be happier. They, mm -hmm. The neurotransmitters are better. Their norepinephrine, dopamine, glutamate are more balanced. It's been shown in, in they're, studies. They're living in the now, exactly. right, when they meditate. So when people meditate, uh, prayer, exercise, mm -hmm. think about this. When you're really exercising, are you thinking about I'm the not past or worried about thinking the future? about nothing. Nothing. You're exercising yes. in the moment. Yeah. When you're doing a hobby, let's say you love to knit or you love to do Sudoku or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. People have hobbies and they tend to have hobbies because when they're doing them, that's all they're doing. They're focused in that moment. They're not thinking about everything mm -hmm. else. And that's all meditation is. It's focusing on the present moment. And that's when you feel real joy. Mm -hmm. When do you feel stress and anxiety? When you're thinking about tomorrow. The, phone, or... the phone's in your ear and somebody's yes. saying, hey, this. And, and, and when you're trying to multitask and do 27 things at once, you tend to feel stressed. Mm -hmm. You're not happy. So again, there's a lot of things you can do just inside of your own mind mm -hmm. to focus on the present moment because you only experience happiness in the now. You can think about, maybe I'll be happy in the future when I retire, but that's not really happiness. Or you can say, oh, I remember the joy that my daughter's birth gave me. Yeah, but that's not being happy right mm -hmm. now. That's different. And I'll talk about that next time. In my office, my poster says, what you think you become. 
Yeah. I mean, it's it couldn't be more true. What think you think it about, and, what and you bring it, about, you bring it right to you. Yeah. Right. It can worry can breed more worry. So it's like you said, it's a big topic, but I think it's important to bring up. It is, and and I hope we didn't try to oversimplify it. But I think our our goal today was number one: go home knowing that this is not a genetic issue mm -hmm. by and large. Okay, genetics play a part, but it's a small part. Number two, you have things you can do. You have power. You can control this or change this or alter the course of this. Mm -hmm. And they're not heroic things, okay? And then we haven't even gotten to the metaphysical, and then we're gonna talk about treatments. Yeah, different supplements that work amazingly. Amazingly well. Yes. Um, that we use commonly in, in people that have anxiety, but mm -hmm. kids that have ADD, mm. things that calm the brain. We can, we can improve GABA. Mm -hmm. We can improve the, the way the cells function. So there's a lot of things at your disposal that if you've never been exposed to them, we're, we're going to do that next week or the week after or stay tuned sometime in December. Um, Hopefully we anyhow, leave. Uh, do we have any questions, my good man? We do. Uh, first off, a uh, just as a note, uh, meditation has absolutely changed someone's life. Oh, so awesome. They, they, they completely agree with you there. I hear that all uh, the time. I, I hear that all the time. And in fact, this weekend uh, on Saturday, I'm, I'm doing a lecture uh, I was asked to do a lecture on anxiety and meditation specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you for sharing that. And for people that go, oh, I can't meditate, my brain's too busy. You're the person that needs to meditate the most. <laughs> you meditation is down. nothing more than sitting still and breathing. Mm -hmm. And I know your brain's busy. It's firing off a thousand things. I know. That's what everybody experiences. Not just you, everybody. But being in that space, when your brain starts thinking about a thousand things, you go, wait a minute, I'm not supposed to be thinking about that come back to my breath, mm -hmm. come back to being in the now, that's a win. You just scored a point because <laughs> you did. Ding. You put a little scoreboard up. <laughs> but you scored a point because you, you found yourself being carried away with thought and you brought yourself back to the present moment. That's all meditation is. There can be more to it, but that's a great start. Thanks for sharing that. All right. So how uh, could this all relate to OCD? Mm. Obsessive compulsive disorder. Yeah, that's <laughs> definitely in the mix. What I mean by that, is people with obsessive compulsive disorder, um, first of all, uh, it's a gift, not a curse, okay? If you learn how to control it. Uh, <laughs> Your wife is laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so I've had my share of uh, borderline OCD issues. Um, and what, I, what I've learned over time is it's great to be organized, um, but OCDs can get crippling. Mm -hmm. I have a friend that has terrible Tourette's and terrible OCDs, and it's 20 minutes for him to get out of the house because he has a certain routine he has to go through. He has to lock the door three times and check the stove twice. And so OCDs can be crippling. What's been found in the literature is oftentimes OCDs is a lack of serotonin. So I don't want to put you on an SSRI. Remember our cotton balls? That was serotonin. I was throwing serotonin at that nerve. You're out of serotonin. We tend to use things like 5-hydroxytryptophan. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very simple, safe supplement, not a prescriptive prescription that when you take it, your body says, thank you, and it turns it into serotonin. And I find that to be very empowering for people with OCDs. Mm -hmm. And then getting that brain to be more responsive to serotonin, maybe your membrane's crusty. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need to change the fats and <laughs> yep. make that nerve work better. So yeah, there's, there are definitely things that can be impacting OCD. So next up is uh, talk about supplements, the, uh, specifically the supplement 5-HTP. Huh. Ah. Uh, is it any good at alleviating symptoms of depression? So you just yeah, about, it yeah. can. We just, we just, 5 htp is 5-hydroxytryptophan. It very well, it can be. Now, oftentimes people say, well, tryptophan is an amino acid, and tryptophan gets converted into 5-HTP. I'll just take tryptophan. That can work. The problem is if your gut's a mess, if you have dysbiosis or poor, or poor gut health, the body will shanghai that tryptophan down something called the kynurenic pathway and create quinolinic acid in the brain, and boy, then the brain's even more inflamed, <laughs> okay? So I try to avoid the tryptophan, I just go with 5-HTP. Make sure you're getting it from a good manufacturer. Um, there are a lot of really not so good manufacturers out there, and you buy a bottle and it says 5-HTP, and then you take the capsule to a lab and you have it analyzed and there's no 5-HTP in it. Um, having said all that, 5-HTP can be an and the, awesome... the follow-up, there's a, a myth or a rumor that you can't take 5-HTP with SSRIs, which you would say is completely false, correct? You would... It's a theory. It's a theory, yes. It's a theory. So in the medical community, we say never take 5-HTP if you're on an SSRI because you might get serotonin syndrome. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the problem with that. There's never been a case demonstrated, ever. Not a one. Not a one. 
And in Europe, they do give 5-HTP to their patients on SSRIs because it helps them make these cotton balls. So just as I was throwing cotton balls and they were getting bounced out and I ran out of serotonin, if I'm taking 5-HTP, I keep filling my vesicle up with more serotonin. Mm -hmm. So I would say that's not a contraindication, but you should talk with your doctor uh, before you engage mm -hmm. that path. Be working with the health professional. So bullet points, can you summarize everything? Uh, how can I, say I'm, I'm trying to eat better, I'm yeah. trying to exercise, yeah. what else can I do to get to relieve depression and anxiety symptoms? Okay, Just bullet points. Bullet points. <laughs> Keeping it simple mm -hmm. and keeping it logical, start, let's do it together. You start simplest things first and just simple introduction of what? I would say sleep would be a great first start. But I can't sleep. But you can't sleep. Meditation would probably precede that. Melatonin. Melatonin and meditation mm -hmm. will facilitate sleep. That's mm -hmm. a great place to start. I think it's a good place My to start. My brain will sleep better if I put healthy fats in it. Mm -hmm. Get so rid of the carbs. find some solution for your sleep. We have a sleep handout. Um, talk with Chelsea if you're not sleeping well, mm -hmm. because that's one of the keys. Mm -hmm. You know, there's those three basic things. If I get good sleep, if I get good food, if I get exercise, I'm going to trend in a better direction. Don't jump all the way to, I'm just going to take 5-HTP or I'm going to take some yeah. neurotransmitter. I agree with you. I think sleep, sleep. is one of the primary and focal points. if you can't, points. there's ways that we can get you to sleep. Yes. And, and then I, so I would say number two is get healthy fats healthy yeah. fats. Look at your diet. Look for anything that has corn oil or canola oil or trans fat or fried foods or chips and get it the hell out mm -hmm. and get some healthy fats in. Avocados, olives, fish, coconut, salmon, fish, um, all those healthy fats. You want good healthy fats. Mm -hmm. So we're sleeping, we got healthy fats, exercise. You don't need to be a power lifter. You don't need to be a marathon runner. Just move your body. Mm -hmm. 20 minutes can be enough. 20 minutes, three to four days a week. And you're going to notice on days you exercise, mood is better. Mm -hmm. And just start wherever you're comfortable and build from there. So we're now sleeping, we're now exercising, we're now getting healthy fats. Mm -hmm. Start getting vegetables. Magnesium, yeah, cruciferous magnesium. vegetables, broccoli, as many as you can. Six, mm -hmm. to seven, six to seven servings, we would say. That's a lot of vegetables. And then the last thing I would add is learn how to meditate. Calm.com, yeah. it's simple. We have classes here every Thursday. Every Thursday at 630, we have a meditation class. Mm -hmm. Go to calm.com, learn how to meditate. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now we have sleep, we have healthy fats, we've got lots of vegetables, much better food. We're simply moving our body, mm -hmm. and we learn to meditate. That is... That should get it, you somewhere. <laughs> that's going to get you a long way. Yeah. That's going to get you a long way. Yeah. All right. Well, that's still not working. I still I, and I want to come in and see you. Okay. How can I do that? That's a great question. So you want to come in and see me? Why wouldn't you? Right? <laughs> we're, we're, we're adorable. No. Uh, yeah. we're adorable. Come in. And, so Chelsea works with patients a ton mm -hmm. on getting their diets, and she can guide people on their sleep and on their exercise, and you can get tons of labs ordered to look for food allergies. Mm. So Chelsea... We didn't even talk about gut brain oh, connection. Lord. How much time okay. we got? Yeah. So again, it's a big topic. It is a big um, topic. So gut brain's a big one. But Chelsea works with that kind of issue mm -hmm. all the time and mm -hmm. is very, very helpful. Uh, our phone number here is area code 513-924-5300. That again <laughs> is 513-924-5300. And... When you make that appointment, whether it's with me or with Chelsea, I can see you as well. Mm -hmm. um, Chelsea can work with a lot of folks if, if we're dealing with just a, a simple anxiety sleep issue. Mm -hmm. If you think, well, I've got hormone and thyroid and, and, and bigger issues, then even if that's the case, you will often see a patient mm -hmm. and turn from to me if you think yeah. they need more. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's always a good place to start with nutrition. It's always a good place you to can start. You make a lot you of progress. can't go wrong. And if it's bigger than that, and you go, no, you don't get it. I've been suicidal, and I have drug addictions, and I've got alcohol addictions, and I've got all these really major monsters in my past, then come in and see me. Mm -hmm. And let's begin to dismantle them one at a time. I'm not going to take your drugs away. We're going to build you up from the ground and then get you to a point where you don't think you need those meds or need less of them. We're going to solve the real reason why your brain's inflamed and not just try to throw neurotransmitter medications at it. Mm -hmm. Okay? 924 mm -hmm. 5300. Okay. Anything else, Chris? We're good. We're okay. Good. okay. Perfect. Hey, I think next week we pick up right where we left off. Yep. We're going to get into the metaphysical. I want to talk about what mm. you can do to change the way you think, change your belief systems, change the kind of energies you decide to plug into. I don't think most of us 
take advantage of the fact that at any moment in time, we can decide to be calm or we can decide to be upset. Mm -hmm. We had a meeting this morning. Yes. It didn't go so smooth, yeah. right? <laughs> no. There were some real faux pas committed. <laughs> uh, we could have left there and been very upset. Um, we always can find a reason to be upset, whether yeah. it's just the guy cut us off in traffic or it's our wife or husband did something or our kids. We can always find a reason to be upset. Mm -hmm. We want to talk next week about what you can do to inside your own brain decide how you want to feel and execute that. That's key. Retraining. And maybe next time we'll get into more of the supplementation. We'll talk yep. about GABA. We'll talk about serotonin. Theanine. We'll talk about theanine. theanine. We'll talk theanine. about a lot of these different things that we use. Lithium salts, though mm -hmm. they're awesome. All right. So great questions. Thanks for tuning in. This was a lot of fun. Yes. Uh, I hope we didn't create more confusion. Or more um, anxiety. If we did, bring your questions next week and we're going to hit it at three o'clock next Wednesday. All right. See you then. See ya. Take care.